Welcome to the Husky Bamboo Podcast. It's a sign from a podcast, meaning that it's about nothing in particular. Hello and welcome again after a long ass recess to the Husky Badu podcast. This is your Husky Badu Ariel with a full head of hair and a lot of time to uh, reevaluate some shit. And which time was taken uh, during this three week hiatus that you have suffered without hearing the sweet tones of my voice which I apologize for that and there is a reason for why I checked out not for any technical issues the equipment was still here everything is here it's just my will to actually talk alone and expressing what at the moment was just pure piss and vinegar I didn't feel that it was the right thing to do under the circumstances of where we are at now as a situation in the world as it is. Not that I consider that my podcast is something that is being heard uh, all over the world, that everybody's listening to me, and therefore I have to make these decisions because, oh my God, the, the weight of the, the weight of the world is in my shoulders and whatnot. No, it's just that. I felt that at the moment that it wasn't a good t- a good idea to uh, just uh, throw out what I felt. And what I felt was anger. I was pretty fucking angry. Well, a lot of shit that happened. Uh, things that I love. Things that I... In general, just seeing how the world has gone to hell, basically in this past month uh you would think that in a world where things are chaotic as is right now uh, the last thing you would want to do is this fucking personal vendetta against everybody that thinks differently from you but no uh woke culture now has reborn to a degree that i just cannot i cannot condone or accept uh i am all for defending people's rights i'm all for allowing an individual to live their life as they see fit i'm all for that and i I support it 1000 percent. but once you get to the point that you want to be this kind of an asshole to people uh for whatever the fucking reason i i I cannot I really cannot understand it. I really can't. I, I'm trying to wrap my head as to why this necessity to have people conform to an idea. Like, you know, you are going to fit the narrative or we're going to cancel your ass. Uh, case in point, a bunch of wrestlers. Well, this is old news now, but this is one of the reasons why I, I decided to go radio silent because it fucking pisses me off. A bunch of wrestlers were called out uh, in a movement uh, by female wrestlers that they took advantage of said female wrestlers. Uh, Most of these cases, swift justice was made, and I have absolute no complaints about that whatsoever. Uh, I mean, if you were guilty and if you did these things, yes, suffer all the consequences that need be suffered. Because that's fucking awful. But if we're going to just throw people under the bus without proper or do doing the due diligence of going through the actual channels of justice, meaning trial, re- presenting evidence, and not just execute people in the court of public opinion, which can vary in any second in any moment, uh, that... That makes me worry. And in the cases of the wrestlers, a uh, majority of them, the great majority of them, uh, if not to say all of them, were found guilty with sufficed evidence and sufficed voices uh, uh, stating th- that this was the case, that they are, uh, that they did what they did. 
and I'm not going to go into the details of what they did. This is old news now at this point. But, uh, yeah. In those cases, Swift Justice, I'm all for it. Yes, call them out and whatnot. But in the cases where things are kind of, you know, it's a he said, she said kind of deal. I'm not going to go there that deeply into the judgment point. You know, I don't think that's the right call. I don't think that's the right decision to make in terms of calling out people because canceling. You, you, you got to understand. I mean, I understand that you want justice. You People wronged you, but you have to understand what, you, what cancel culture is doing is canceling a person's livelihood. And yeah, some of these cases probably well deserved, but some of these assholes feed families. And I know I'm not going to, I'm not going to defend their actions. If they fucking did it, as I said before, if they fucking did it, they did it and they deserve the full uh, weight of justice on top of them. And let the consequences go and they should suffer the consequences for their actions if they did it if they didn't do it then this is, there's this fucking thing called due process where people have to be judged and the evidence must be presented to the court of law and then the court the justice system hence its name justice system would have to decide what is the penalty that's what should be done and it's in the case what WWE has decided to do for one of their wrestlers who was called out in this situation, namely Matt Riddle. Now, the Matt Riddle situation is a little different from the others, whereas that uh, the others had blatant evidence, multiple testimonies of people calling them out uh, and people corroborating this, uh, th these stories and whatnot. Uh... In the Matt Riddle case, it's a little bit more complicated because there was an admission of guilt uh, on behalf of Matt uh, with uh, this certain person that is calling him out. But the side of Matt Riddle is that it was an affair. It's not that he was forcing himself upon this uh, person. Uh, I apologize that I'm not saying the person's name, not because I want to protect her or whatnot. It's just that I honestly forgot. But this person is stating that uh, Matt Riddle had his had his way uh, had his way with her and uh, and threw her out like a bad habit. And Matt Riddle is claiming that it, this is a case of stalker that the the person here in question is stalking him because he did in fact have a an extramarital relation. Matt Riddle is married, has kids. Uh, he did, in fact, have an extramarital relationship with this woman. He is not denying it because the evidence are freaking clear. Uh, the woman has pictures of them making out basically anywhere or everywhere. <laughs> uh, but he is stating, though, that what they did was consensual. In that case, uh, I mean, I don't know who to believe. I mean, he did the right thing and coming out and saying his version but I don't know I don't know and that's just the tip of the iceberg but the thing that really got my fucking gears grinding uh, yeah starting to sound like family guy uh, <laughs> uh, the, re the thing that really pisses me off is this fucking woke culture uh, that in the middle of a fucking pandemic, people requesting cancellations of people just because they do not wish to comply or in the case of certain people because they're getting called out for doing for being accused of doing something uh, lewd. I'm talking now in the case of Crystalia. I do not know Crystalia, obviously. I am a nobody. I am. I live in the Dominican Republic. He lives in California or whatever the fuck he lives. He lives in stateside. I'm in Dominican Republic. I do have no knowledge of the man. I know nothing about the man other than his comedy. And that's it. I have no game to earn in this shit. I'm a total outsider. 
But my disadvantage in this situation, what women will look at me is like, well, he has a dick. So obviously he's going to go with the man because, you know, men stick together, dogs and dogs uh, stay stick together and whatnot. <laughs> this is the thing. Uh, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm not trying to uh, disparage any of the uh, uh, accusers of Crystalia or question them and whatnot. If what Crystalia, if what you're accusing, and I'm speaking like if I know these uh, these women, if what Crystalia did is true, then he definitely deserves to be canceled and whatnot. Uh, however. Uh, for what the evidence that Chris has presented on his end is that, yes, he was engaging with these girls, but only texting them, which is another way of creeping because that's uh, another creepy way because that's like mentoring them into having sex with them. I mean, he's like, OK, I'm playing along with you girls and I'm just going to wait the end game, which is you hit that magical 18 number. And then we can go to school. That's creepy on its own end. However, not illegal in terms of the legal department where we can go on. And I'm not defending him. I'm just stating that under the court of law, that will not be illegal. Although you do have to question uh, the way he went about it. Now, uh, going back to what uh, Dalia has provided as evidence in some cases, and I'm not saying all of them. In some cases, when he found out that the people that were uh, talking to him or the people who who he was texting, uh, when he found out that they were underage, he just like, well, I'm done. Hans, uh, Pontius pilot passed me the the water glassy thing let me wash my hands and thank you fuck you bye in some cases in other cases he pursued it because apparently must have been a, a very beautiful girl so uh, it's it's disgusting and but uh, it shows that restraint i guess i don't know I mean, you you can say that the, the, these girls were asking for it because they were the ones who were engaging him and that he should should have known better being the adult in terms of n shutting that shit down right then and there and deciding, you know what, uh, this is not worth it, not worth fucking up my career, not f worth destroying everything that I worked for so hard. It's not worth it. So, uh please uh, pay attention to other dudes but for what I've heard the dude uh, was always slinging dick that's the <laughs> that's the consensus uh, and, uh, uh, in this whole thing so I don't know what to think I guess that's the conclusion I'm trying to say I don't know what to think but uh, the uh, The rush into which to accuse a person because, first of all, this happened years ago. Not that long ago, but the guy is now, I don't know if he's married, but he just had a kid. Uh, I don't know if he stopped that behavior now. I would hope he did. Because, you know, it's kind of hard to start a family. You're fucking around all over the place. Kind of hard to keep that family, uh, uh, th that family uh, thing uh, together with you fucking around on the side and the wife feeling like a piece of shit because she's being ignored. So that's kind of big. I would I would gather that that's kind of hard. I mean, I have no experience in the area whatsoever. But what I'm trying to say is that. I'm coming from this from a perspective that people are not going to find. They're not going to like it and fuck it. I, 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 at this point, I don't give a shit what people like or don't like. You just have to fucking take it because I'm taking all the bullshit that I'm seeing 
on social media, on television, on everywhere. And I, I have to take it. I have to take all this negative bullshit that I see. So if what I'm going to express now is not of your liking, then t- shove it up your ass. I guess that's what I have to say. Shove it up your ass. Uh, I'm fucking done with go- uh, a, a, a wool culture and cancel culture and all this other bullshit. I'm fucking done with it. Because you guys want to enforce uh, shit on people the same way that you accuse the conservatives of enforcing their ways into your lives. So you're using the same strategies uh, that these people have been using against you and you're just using it backwards. So you're returning evil with evil. Now, I would like to make one thing clear. I am like center right, but I accept. I'm like a, a libertine. I accept people for who they fucking are. I don't give a shit what the fuck you do or what the fuck you like or what, are we on, what the fuck you want to call yourself. I don't give a shit. I don't care. I don't care because that's your life. That's the way you want to live. That's the way you want to do things. I am not an entity to tell you what to fucking do. And if you're looking at someone to tell you what the fuck to do, then you're just a fucking sheep. You find your own purpose in life. You have to find that thing that tells you that north in you, that compass in you, that moral compass that tells you what the fuck to do. So you have to do that. Just learn how to fucking do it. Don't fucking torture yourself. And to trying to jump into uh, these flaming hoops that fucking everybody has set up for you. But don't impose your fucking views on others. Just don't do that shit. And like I said, the states have gone, the United States have gone to hell. And I'm sorry that this podcast has been such a fucking downer. And I am trying to do things differently. By the way, I'd like to announce that. <laughs> like, oh, in the middle of this fucking rant of where I'm just ripping people a new asshole for no fucking reason whatsoever, apparently. I'm also going to express now like a little parentheses to explain that I might have a partner here soon to do uh, these podcasts with. So I won't be the only fucking voice that you will hear this lovely dulcet voice that you're listening to right now so i won't be the only one talking yay (laughs) where was i oh yeah rant anyway (laughs) i'm just fucking done with all this persecution this martyr shit i'm fucking done with it why this why do we have to be this way huh why do we have to be this way why did we can't accept each other for who we are? Huh? Why? I mean, and I'm going to talk now to the liberals. Okay. Why can't you accept? Uh, and I mean, I don't mean all liberals. There's some liberals that are believers that believe in God. But why can't you accept uh, that a person believes in God? Why? Why? Because they taught you that in college. Uh, this whole God thing is just fu- some fucking bullshit of control. Well, let me get let me give you an idea. Look, if something positive I can take out of all the shit that has happened lately is that I can rest assured that it is not religion that has destroyed the world. And it's not science. It, it The ideal is not the problem. The problem is fucking people. And they will twist any ideal to their fit their own bidding. And they will destroy the reason why that idea was created in the first place. Religion was not created just to control people and make them uh, for governors or government to have another way of how to control people. That's the argument that communists use. No, religion was... Religion was created because there was a necessity. It was born out of a necessity, an internal necessity that all humans have to worship something. There's an innate natural 
thing inside of us that tells us there is something bigger than us out there. And there is something inside of us that tells us you have to worship something. It's embedded in the DNA of human beings. So why the fuck are we questioning that all of a sudden? Why do we have to remove God from everything? Why do we have to destroy the name of God and everything? Now, I'm not defending the religious assholes out there that are out there to just talk shit about people and make them feel like a piece of shit. I have no sympathy and no alliance to those type of people. What I do, what I am talking about is that those people who believe in God, but are not assholes that are actually, you know, trying to do the thing that it says. And what I mean, the thing I'm talking about, the Bible, the good stuff, not the evil shit, because I do recognize there's some fucked up things in the Bible as well. But I concentrate on the good stuff. Like some of uh, some Christians do, they concentrate on the good stuff. So let's not throw everybody uh, on the uh, uh, under the bus. There's some good Christians out there. Like there's some great atheists out there that have better fucking morals than any Christian that I know. And that's the that's the God honest truth. That's the God honest truth. So. I'm not going to fucking throw anybody under the bus and tell you, no, your ideals are wrong. So this is another thing. Okay, so science, not me, not society, science tells you that there is a difference, a biological difference between man and a woman. There are biological differences and you can determine, determine, sorry, the sex of a person by scientific testing but now you can't say that you can't say that now you can't say that you were born a man you can't say that it's a no it's your choice to be a man i apologize to the people who feel that way i'm not trying to be disrespectful for what you believe in and that you what you are going through with your sexual identity And I'm not trying to be an asshole for you or trying to make you switch sides into the whole thought process. You do what you got to do and you be whatever the fuck you want to be. But it is my personal opinion. And I don't care if this burns me or whatever the fuck. That if you were born a man, regardless of how you the fuck you feel, you will die. 1000% a man. Why? Because science, bitch. Science. Not God. I didn't mention God. Science. Now, I'm allowing you. No, 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 no. Not because the law, you're you're creating fucking laws to enforce me. No, 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 no. I don't give a shit about those fucking laws. If you're biologically born a man, you're a man for me. But if you want to call yourself a woman, be my fucking guest. Do whatever the fuck you want to do. That's on you, man. Do whatever you got to do. That's you want to call yourself that. Okay, whatever. And if you want me to call you that, I'll be respectful and and and, uh, be an asshole. And and I'll try to be okay. I'll call you whatever you want me to call you. Okay, I'll be respectful. But God forbid some accident happens and they have to determine certain shit via DNA testing guess what (laughs) science is gonna say you a dude and there is nothing no legislation that can change that because you can't change the truth you can't change the truth you can create laws yes you can create a bunch of shit. You can sh- you can yank the system up to different 20 different ways. It doesn't change the truth. It doesn't. And if you don't like it, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, I've been very open on this podcast and I've said that if there's unquestionable truth that shows up that there is no God. Okay. I guess I have to accept it. I'll accept it. But guess what? 
there isn't any proof on either side you can make you can make arguments great arguments on the existing and non-existence of god but if i'm if you're being allowed to just because you feel like it or if you made the choice or you feel that you are a different sex other than the one you were born in then why can I not believe in God? Those are two different things. No, they're not, because you're pressuring the issue. If you're going to pressure the issue, then why can I go that route as well? Because this is all a fucking pressure issue. This is all a fucking pressure issue. So, I really don't like doing these type of things. But it's... The things that have been bubbling inside me. And believe me, I'm being very nice right now compared to how I felt these past three weeks that I didn't record anything. Because how I felt? Oh my God. Oh my God. It was worse. It was far worse. So I'm more calmer now. (laughs) I'm more mellow. I'm more chill. Yeah. If that's the word I'm trying to search for right now. (sighs) Yeah. Okay, let's change the subject because I I tend to start these podcasts now with fucking downers. (sighs) If you're still listening to this, it's a fucking miracle. (laughs) Okay. Uh. Let's talk more bad news. Then. Yeah, uh, I stopped doing the comic that I was doing. Not because of lack of interest. It's because I realized something very, very, very important. That if you don't write a script, you're fucking doing nothing. So it doesn't matter how good you illustrate something. If you don't have a backbone or a structure to follow, you're not doing dick. And I'm working full time from home, not from where I am currently. Oh, by the way, if you're listening to this, I'm actually recording a video on this. Not the best quality and not the best lighting because I do not have those equipment, but it's better to do with what you have and not do nothing at all. And since I was just posting nothingness, basically, it's just the logo of the podcast i rather do this and you guys see me as a talking head and see that i still have some remnants of bell's palsy <laughs> because my lips barely move anyway um yeah i stopped doing the pod the the the, the comic or the graphic novel i am uh writing uh, the structure or the the baseline of what I think the the story should be, and hopefully I'll write uh, the script that will fall in line to it. Uh, the problem is that is a very fucking complex story, and I've already explained this before in previous podcasts. You can go listen to the other ones that I've done; they're all available and all wherever you get podcasts. They're on the, uh, your iTunes, uh, Spotify, uh, CastBox, which is our main uh, page where we post them. Uh, so, yeah, that sucks. But I'm hopefully I get my groove back and start uh, writing it. That's the thing is that writing is not my forte. Uh, my forte is scribbling, doing doodles. Uh, and with everything that I see, like the world, you know, you you think like, well, comic books are, are not that fucking important right now. I mean, for some people it is. They need a little a leave, uh, a little distraction from the shittiness that is the world right now. But, you know, a lot of self-doubt. But I have to kick my own ass and push myself in order to do things that applies those words apply to many uh, many a things 
that are going on with me right now. As you can probably tell, I'm fucking overweight. I'm way over 300 pounds. I'm not even six feet tall. And that's a fucking problem for my health. And I'm blatantly aware of it, but I also uh, have a lot of shit in my head. Uh, a lot of self doubt, a lot of a lot of trauma, a lot of issues, that, uh, a lot of burdens that I've been carrying around uh, in my life for the majority of my life. Which I don't think I will use this opportunity because this one has been a downer enough already. But I guess these podcasts for me are more like a therapy session where I get to vent out all the bullshit that or the shit that's in my head. And you lucky people that get to listen to this or in this case now watch it are the ones that get to suffer the consequences of me uh, just shooting shit profusely profusely i'm sorry english is my second language through my mouth uh (laughs) (sighs) well as i stated earlier uh, i'm gonna find a partner to do this uh the partner is my part of my life partner actually my wife yeah she agreed to do this with me so we're just gonna have to find the day where she feels more comfortable to uh, record these. I'll let her know that we are starting to do video. And hopefully we'll have some good conversations. I remember on a previous podcast that we did before. Uh, before the Husky Bible. Which was uh, the Smart Nerd Podcast. Uh, those are no longer available. Uh, those are totally erased. And I would have to see if I find some of the old recordings around somewhere. Uh... But uh, that was fun experience. That was a fun experience. Uh, recording those with her. And hopefully we can repeat the magic that we had back then. And hopefully there won't be such downers. Because me alone by my own devices. I just talk about very down depressing bullshit. And I'm checking myself right now. And uh, seeing myself how I just dig myself deeper and deeper into this fucking hole which is that is called uh <laughs> uh the words that are expressing anyway uh i hope you guys are well i hope you guys uh that are still hanging around with me even after listening to this spew of piss and vinegar are still hanging around with me i'm just saying the truth i'm just I'm just stating my opinion. I could be wrong. I could be right. I could be whatever. I'm not claiming to have absolute knowledge. I'm just a fucking human being. Okay. Can we get back to that? You know, not being absolutely right about everything. And not condemning people for fucking up in ways that you probably would fuck up as well. You know. There has to be place for forgiveness. I mean, we all fuck up. All of us. Unconditionally. Unconditionally. We all fuck up. We all fuck up. Do you know, I I think I've stated this before, the, the definition of sin. Oh God, here we go with the religious bullshit. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. The definition of sin is a Greek word. I don't know how to say the fucking Greek word because one, I am not a theologian and two, I don't get that deep into shit. But I do know what the word sin means. It came from the Greek word that was used in an archery term for Greeks that where they were trying to shoot and aiming at the mark. And basically sin means I missed missing the mark. Missing the mark. You know, you're trying to aim, you're trying to hit bullseye, and you miss. When you miss, that's what they used to call, well, I sinned. I missed. I missed. So, t- 
taking it on through on that sense. And by the way, that is basically what Christianity, Jesus, the Bible, God is trying to tell us that all of us are sinners in that particular sense, not the religious uh, connotation of it. Is that we all fuck up. We all fuck up. And that's why I am, even though with all my shit, even though with this foul mouth and the plethora of <laughs> of shit, a laundry list of things that are wrong with me in terms of professing to believe in God and not actually living it up to the best of my abilities, I still decide to believe in God because I need someone to restore me. I need to find someone to clean me because I'm aware of my fuck ups. And if you don't feel that way, fine. Okay. You don't feel that way. I do. Maybe I'm wrong for feeling that way. Maybe it's just all in my fucking head. Maybe I'm just playing with myself and torturing myself too much. But there's something with the the Jesus story that hits too much to my heart. In the terms that God came down to earth, turned himself into a human being, and knew that we, we were such big fuck-ups that he knew that there was no way that we can clean ourselves from this problem of sin. And so he just took it upon himself to carry the weight of sin and put it on himself and die being innocent, not doing anything wrong, being innocent, dying so those sins can be cleansed. So he did his, he himself did the job for us and that comes into what uh the bible says that the the word became flesh and the word this it sounds so stupid that i'm doing like a, a semi bible study what with this dirty ass mouth that i have but again the i digress the word the Bible, the word that is mostly used to describe it in Hebrew is Torah. For what I've been told, I'm not a theologian. Again, don't quote me on this. Don't bank. Don't take it to the bank with me. I could be wrong. But for what I've been told, the word Torah means instructions at how to hit the mark. And according to the same Bible in the, in the book of John, the word became flesh. Now, that's a whole nother can of worms that I don't think we have time to talk about. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this is so weird. We, we went from a fucking rant to talking about the Bible. This I don't even know what's going on in my head. And, and if you guys are still hanging around with me, bless you. Because <laughs> I'm fucking gone. And by the way, I don't do drugs. <laughs> I don't do drugs. No, no edibles. No nothing. This is all natural. Or all fucked up. Whatever you want. Whatever predilection you want to take. But it's fucking honest. It's from the heart. And Okay. As I was saying. Jesus' word. The word became flesh. And that word... The Torah, instructions how to hit the mark. Jesus had to become that word, the living word, because he lived the word. He lived the instructions of the Torah. And by living it, he lived a holy life, according to what the Bible says. And since he lived a holy life, he was innocent of sin because he lived the law. Yet, still being innocent, he died. And took upon himself the price of sin. Being perfect, he didn't need to be uh, judged. But 
And that's the whole spiritual implication. I never see the story of Jesus. Well, the Romans killed him or what the anti-Semites say that the Jews did. That is never the story for me. That has never been the story for me. That that doesn't, it doesn't matter who fucking killed him. Although it was the Romans. Just to be clear. I can't be anti-Semite because I have some Jewish blood in me. (laughs) So I cannot be anti-Semite. Okay. Love Jews because I'm. Uh, four fifth one I guess if you want to call it that way I have some Jewish blood in me so it can't be one uh, so yeah uh, the, the, the who killed Jesus is not the important that the reason why he died and then the supernatural happened that his resurrection according to what the Bible says again if you don't believe it you don't believe it but I in my case I have to because that's the only in my view, in my opinion, the only way that all, any of us can reach atonement, any of us, any human, because that sacrifice of Jesus is not reserved for Christians or Jews. It's for everyone. It's just that if you believe it, it's for you. If you accept it, it's for you. And that's the thing that Christianity has completely fucked up. Because they're like, no, you have to follow the rituals. You have to follow this and this and this and this and this and this and that. And then you can reclaim that sacrifice. No, it's actually, you believe it? Boom. That's it. Sins cleanse. Forever. Not that I mean that you can live like an asshole after that. Because, oh, no, because then you're denying the sacrifice if you're living an asshole. But, you know, you somebody does something for you you kind of owe them you know kind of owe them and in the case of jesus you owe them loyalty you know you owe him your loyalty so i guess in my fucked up way with my fucked up language cursing even now as i speak i'm expressing that i owe jesus my gratitude because i guess he's the only reason why i haven't gone to an early grave let's let's just leave it at that because there's a lot of dark shit in my life in my past that if it wasn't for that I would never have gotten through with it so I needed Jesus the whole idea even whether I question it every day whether I question the sanity even myself even as I say these things Right now, even though I'm questioning it at this moment, I need it because it's the only hope I have. It's the only hope I know. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I didn't try to hurt anybody with this being wrong, which was my problem back in the day when I was a spearheaded Pentecostal, tongue-talking believer that I didn't realize that I was hurting people. I was hurting people and teaching them dog shit, basically. I was teaching them dog shit. And that's something that I have not forgiven myself for. And it's something that I have... uh, put myself in in a type of purgatory which is the reason why i think that i have this problem of not opening myself more to god because i I have this fucking fear that i'm might go uh, into that deep end again and i really don't want to do that because i think my eyes are open now in terms of religion and what it does to the way you process the world religion is a problem but i don't see jesus or god as a religion i don't think he doesn't even recognize a religion all he's looking for is just people to trust him and let him clean you jesus (sighs) i don't know who's staying along after listening to all this fucking crap that I've just spewed right now 
that was all over the goddamn place. And if I offended you, I'm I'm truly I'm truly sorry. But I just needed to say my piece. I needed to say my shit. I needed this to get out of my system and be honest to myself and to others because I really have this fucking hatred to bullshit. I fucking hate it at every single level of every single ideal. I see bullshit in religion. I see bullshit in in, in Democrats, Republicans, religious people, Christians, non-Christians, atheists. I see religious. I see bullshit everywhere. And where I see bullshit, I it, it fucking does something to me that it's just I, I fucking hate it, and I don't want anybody to swallow that shit anymore. And that includes people that I love and care about. So, with this lovely ending, I would like to conclude <laughs> the Husky Rival podcast. Hopefully, in the future, shit will not be this fucking bleak and dark. And I will actually make you laugh and have fun, which was the original purpose of this podcast and not of now you seeing a fucking bearded, uh, thick glasses wearing dude. Just spewing all the fucking piss and vinegar out of his heart and trying to find some sort of more, uh, normality and, and tranquility in his mind by just expressing himself nonstop while you people suffer it for almost an hour. So, this is Ariel Duran, and I'm doing the Spock uh, Live Long and Prosper shit. Hope I don't get sued by CBS or Paramount. Or Viacom, yeah, yeah, they're the ones that own the company. I should stop doing this now. I should really stop doing this now. Okay. <laughs> this has been Ariel Duran. This has been the uh, Husky Buddy Boo Podcast. Take care. Bye. Bye.